The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant is taking measures to stop heavy rain and winds affecting cooling systems. Weather authorities say a low-pressure system may bring torrential rain and strong winds in the Tohoku region on Monday. Tokyo Electric Power Company is piling up sandbags to prevent rain from getting inside electrical facility buildings. Special vehicles used to inject water into the spent fuel storage pools have been moved away and their 50-meter arms folded so they won't blow over. I'm, la I'm laughing, but I'm like, what the, what the hell? TEPCO says it won't matter if no water is injected into the spent fuel storage pool of the number 4 reactor for a week as it has put enough water into the pool. A bad situation has become even worse. The Japanese government and the Tokyo Electric Power Company called TEPCO for short, have been under heavy international criticism for their flawed release of information to the public. As part of preparations for the expected thunderstorms, TEPCO has moored a giant storage barge to the quay. The barge will be used to hold relatively low-level radioactive water. Removal of debris and reinforcement of the fuel pool will be suspended if wind and rain intensify. Contaminated water levels in the tunnels and the turbine buildings of the number two and three reactors have been rising. TEPCO will continue to monitor the situation to make sure that contaminated water does not overflow and run into the sea or groundwater. <laughs> Professor Shunichi Yamashita of Nagasaki University says there's no need for residents of Japan to prepare for radioactive rain. Yamashita said on Sunday that no radiation has been detected in dust in the air. He was referring to an investigation conducted last week in areas more than 20 kilometers away from the crippled nuclear plant. Professor Yamashita says the rain mean radioactive substances on the ground will be washed away and thinly diffused except for in areas that collect rain. The main cause of this problem is the corporate culture at TIPCO. It is this problem that has created difficulties for the government. Rather than lying this issue at the feet of the current administration, we should understand that these specific problems were nurtured for 55 years by the Kazi government business relationship of the earlier era. A severe tropical storm is sweeping over the ocean off Wakayama Prefecture in western Japan and moving northeast. The meteorological agency says as of noon on Sunday, weakened typhoon Songdo was located 140 kilometers southwest of Wakayama and was moving northeast at 65 kilometers per hour. The severe tropical storm has atmospheric pressure of 980 hectopascals and winds of up to 108 kilometers per hour near its center. The storm has brought heavy rain to a wide area of western and central Japan. In the disaster-hit Tohoku region, heavy rain is expected through Monday. Weather authorities have issued warnings for strong wind, high waves, possible landslides and flooding. The main issue at contention this week was a report that seawater injections into reactor number one had been halted for 55 minutes on March 12th, perhaps contributing to a meltdown. After arguments between the Nuclear Safety Com uh, Commission chairman and the Prime Minister and back and forth, we hear last night that uh, there was no 55-minute uh, seawater uh, injection stoppage and that the uh, TEPCO officer who's in charge uh, on the site uh, apparently just uh, dismissed uh, the orders that had come from the TEPCO headquarters and uh, apparently from the Prime Minister. Tourism ministers from Japan, China and South Korea have agreed to create an emergency management manual to prevent tourism from being affected by unfounded rumors. Unfounded rumors? You've got, you've got like three reactors in meltdown. You know what I mean? Do you not think that's going to um, cause people to speak, talk? So it's like, is anybody, anybody, who, anybody who's talking about uh, what's happening in Fukushima Daiichi now, uh, spreading unfounded rumors. Japan's transport minister, Akihiro Ohata, who is also in charge of tourism, attended Sunday's meeting in Pyeongchang, South Korea. The discussion focused primarily on the huge decline in the number of foreign visitors to Japan following the March 11th disaster. A joint statement called on the governments and tourism industries of the three countries to take proactive measures to encourage tourists to visit Japan. 
The statement also said the radiation scare caused by the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant was the primary cause of the decline in visitor numbers. What is, what is an unfounded route? An emergency manual to prevent tourism from being affected by unfounded rumours. What the fuck is an unfounded rumour? What? That you've got three nuclear reactors in a state of meltdown and there's a shitload of radiation being released all over the place, all over Japan, all into the Pacific. Um, the, 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 con the, the containment of Fukushima Daiichi is non-existent. Is that an unfounded rumour? The three ministers agreed to drop an emergency management manual to cope with such situations. The manual would enable the sharing of accurate information among the three countries and prevent tourism from being affected by unfounded rumors stemming from natural disasters or epidemics. This is the thing, man. It's like kind of everybody's looking to the government of, of Japan and, and, and various other places to sort this out, but they're the very cause they are the very cause of the problem. Through the sharing of accurate information among the three countries, foreign tourists will gradually stop avoiding Japan. I wonder who's winning. Never mind. It'll all be in the papers, dear. Come to think of it, he's late too. He missed us altogether yesterday. Well, you can't expect things to be normal after the bomb. Difficulties will be experienced throughout the duration of the emergency period. Normality will only be assumed after the sensation of hostilities. Uh, TEPCO says temperatures in the number 5 reactor and its spent fuel storage pool have risen due to pump failure. The reactor has been in a state of cold shutdown. The utility says it found at 9 p.m. on Saturday that a pump bringing seawater to cooling equipment for the reactor and pool had stopped working. TEPCO says temperatures have been rising since then. Water temperature in the reactor rose from 68 degrees Celsius at 9 p.m. on Saturday to 92.2 degrees at 11 a.m. on Sunday. Water temperature in the fuel storage pool increased from 41 degrees to 45.7 degrees. On Sunday morning, TEPCO installed a new pump that started operating shortly after noon. The company suspects failure in the pump motor caused the malfunction. It is now working to confirm the cause of the failure while monitoring temperatures in the reactor and pool. Ah, oh, yes. Why not? Hard day. Need to relax. Might I suggest the silk tonight, sir? Good idea, Tuck. Poor oh, St. George, eh? Ah, Tuck. There's no end to duty. The law's been my life, Tuck. A judge can't be unreasonable. So how can he be a lover, eh? <laughs> TEPCO says the temperature inside the number 5 reactor at the Fukushima Daiichi plant has started to decline after it rose due to a pump failure. It says the broken pump has been replaced. The reactor has been a state of cold shutdown. An employee patrolling the facility noticed around 9 p.m. on Saturday that the pump was not working. The pump sends seawater to the cooling system of the reactor and the spent fuel storage pool. Its failure caused the water temperature inside the reactor to rise from 68 degrees Celsius at 9 p.m. on Saturday to 93.7 degrees at noon on Sunday. The water temperature inside the spent fuel storage pool rose from 41 to 46 degrees. TEPCO began replacing the failed pump at 8 a.m. Sunday and restored the cooling functions before 1 p.m. The water temperature inside the reactor reached 94.8 degrees before the work was completed. It fell to 76.5 degrees by 2 p.m. and the temperature of the spent fuel storage pool has also stabilized. The utility says it will investigate the cause of the failure as it continues to monitor the temperatures inside the reactor and the pool. You know, if you think that's funny, wait till you hear this. I've just come back from Frank Hackett's office and he wants to put Howard back on the air tonight. You know, apparently the ratings went up five points last night and he wants Howard to go back on and do his angry man thing. What are you talking about? I'm, I'm telling you, they want Howard to go back on and yell bullshit. 
Tokyo Electric Power Company says it's detected higher levels of radioactive materials in seawater samples collected near the water intake at the number two reactor. TEPCO says it detected 24 becquerels of radioactive iodine-131 per cubic centimeter in samples taken on Saturday. The figure is 600 times higher than the national limit. The levels at the spot had been falling recently. A day earlier, the level detected was 130 times the limit. TEPCO says the level of radioactive cesium is also rising. The samples were taken at the same site where iodine-131 at a level 7.5 million times the limit was detected on April 2nd. TEPCO says the reason for the upward trend is not yet clear and that it will monitor the situation closely. Am I telling the truth? Yes, you are. Radioactive levels have been falling at other spots, such as offshore areas and the water intake at the number three reactor. It was an unprecedented kind of accident. When it comes to deciding who has to make decisions and in what way, the rules that existed cannot be applied. I think that it is because of this situation that we witnessed the kinds of things you described. 